In this video, we'll talk about Dijkstra's algorithm, which was found in 1956, and it's an algorithm for finding the shortest path between two vertices. So we'll look at this graph as an example, and this is just a regular network, a graph with vertices and weighted edges. The vertices are drawn with circles here so that I can fill numbers in the circles. That's the only purpose. They're just regular vertices. So we need to pick a starting vertex, and actually in this process, we'll find the shortest path from the starting vertex to every other vertex in the graph. So we'll start with the vertex itself. The shortest path from here to here is zero because we don't need to go anywhere. So we'll fill in a zero there. Then we'll just travel along one edge and we'll fill in the current shortest path from the starting vertex to any edge that we can get to. So this current shortest path is three. So far, if we only travel along one edge, the current shortest path is eight there. And this one is one. Now let's travel along more edges. So we go to this three, and then we go another one, so this current shortest path is four. From this three, we go another two, that current shortest path is now five, so we update this eight to a five. If we start at this one, going another nine, that's 10. That's not shorter than five, so we'll leave the five. And then this one along this four is five. Okay, let's see if we were here, could we get any shorter? Five and another one is six, that's no good. Uh, I think we came from here, but five and another two would be seven. Five and another five would be 10, not shorter than five. Five and a one is six. And then let's start from here. Five and five is 10, not shorter than five. 5 and 2 is 7, not shorter than 6. So now we're done. We have the shortest path from here to every other vertex in the graph. At least we have the length recorded. We could go back and see what the actual path is. Okay, so this algorithm is actually seems a lot simpler than the held carp um, or a lot less messy than brute force uh, or even the greedy algorithm. Um, depending on implementation, there's a few different complexities, but the best complexity you can get is O of n squared, where n is the number of vertices. So that's looking pretty fast. That's polynomial time. Um, a lot better than what we've been looking at. And also, it looks like this is applicable to the traveling salesman problem. It's, it has a similar feel. But actually, this is way easier than the traveling salesman problem. It finds the shortest path between two vertices. Um, traveling salesman has this annoying thing where you can't repeat vertices. So for example, if you try Dijkstra's algorithm on this graph, where we wanted to do a traveling salesman starting and ending at A. Starting and ending at A. Well, if you found the shortest path from A to D, for instance, that's this one, that has length three. But because you can't repeat any vertices, if to get back to A, you have to go along this 99. And that's no longer the shortest traveling salesman path. The shortest traveling salesman path is that we go from A to B to D to C back to A, that's gonna be shorter. We go one plus 30 plus one plus 30. That's a length of 62. It's better than this uh, 102 is what we get going that way. And the problem with Dijkstra is it's never, we're gonna use the notation from the previous video now, from the held carp algorithm. We never look at the path from A to C going through B and D. We can look at the shortest path from A to C, but we won't look at the shortest path from A to C that also goes through B and D. That's not something Dijkstra considers. So that's why Dijkstra cannot solve the traveling salesman problem.